Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at the Holy Scriptures from the Daily Mass readings. And today is the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. And we're going to depart from our travels through Matthew's Gospel, where we ended up in about chapter 25. And we're going back to a previous section uh, for this Sunday uh, Gospel reading, back in the 16th chapter, uh, just after Peter's confession that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and for forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay everyone according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, as I said, this comes just on the heels of his hearing Peter's confession that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. What a powerful passage. This is, of course, Peter makes that confession. And uh, Jesus, of course, in response, uh, says to him, uh, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. So I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Wow, I mean, Peter has got to be floating on these words. He's just been given a new name, the rock. And he has this revelation that he's been given by God, and that revelation becomes the rock as well. And he is the example, the incarnation of that revelation as a person. And he's been given the keys of the kingdom, which means he's been given authority. Uh, and and so he's, I, I've got to believe that he's kind of relishing in all of this to a, some extent. And so at this point, Jesus begins to tell the disciples uh, that he's going to have to go to Jerusalem. He's going to have to uh, suffer. He's going to have to die so he can rise again. And Peter takes it upon himself now to correct the Lord and tells him that he will uh, not, a lever, not allow anything like that to happen. Well, at that point, it goes from, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, to get thee behind me, Satan. All of a sudden, things have really changed for Peter. And uh, you become an obstacle. And again, here's the lesson. You were listening not as, or you were thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. In order for him to truly be the rock of the church, he needs to continue to listen to God, to think as God thinks and not as human beings do. So this was a perfect teaching moment for him again to be brought back to the fact that wherever he is in the kingdom has little to do with himself and everything to do with his, with his inclination to hear from God. And after this, after Jesus again is teaching his disciples what's going to happen to him, then he talks about what they need to do in response to that. And he says, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. At this point, they did not understand that he was going to be crucified on a cross. Jesus, of course, knew. 
And he used that illustration to help them to understand the level of sacrificial living that they needed to have. And so he talks about this in, an, in a term that would be very strange to them. When he talks about taking up your cross and following after me, the only cross, and I've talked about this on numerous occasions, the only cross that these disciples would know about are the crosses that are on the outskirts of Jerusalem on the hillsides, and there the criminals are hung. Uh, they're executed that way, and they see these crosses everywhere because it was a very common form of, ex of execution, of capital punishment for the Romans. And so Jesus was giving them in a prefigurement, the understanding of how he was going to die. He was going to die on a cross. And just as he would die on a cross for our sins in order to follow after him, we have to do the same thing. But he's not talking about literally dying on a cross as he will do, but rather taking up our cross means that we are to give up our lives to him, that he might be able to live in us and through us. Of course, the disciples wouldn't understand this at the time that it was, it was spoken to them, but later on they would. And he goes on to say, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. If you want to avoid the cross, you won't find life eternal. You have to be willing to give up your life in order for others to gain it. And so this was such a powerful teaching. And in fact, it was in uh, the book of Galatians that um, St. Paul kind of gives an idea of what this looks like. And in, Saint, uh, in uh, Galatians, and this is actually, it's in interesting because this is speaking to Peter. After Peter and uh, St. Paul have a confrontation, St. Peter is told these words by St. Paul. He goes, for though through the law I died to the law that I might live for God, I have been crucified with Christ. Yet I live, now, no longer I, but Christ lives in me. Insofar as I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So again, St. Paul was echoing the words of Jesus. To take up your cross means to recognize that my normal life in this world has to be crucified, has to be given up that Christ may come in and build up in me the life that he as creator and redeemer desire for me to live. What a, what a powerful thing to think about, that this is going to be an opportunity for us to participate not only in the death of Christ, but in his resurrection, where we are not only co-crucified, but we are co-ascended and co-seated, as well as co-resurrected. So we participate in all portions. We participate in his crucifixion as we take up our cross, deny ourselves, and live for him. We participate in his resurrection as we anticipate that day, then we will be in with him in heaven. And we will participate again in his ascension and in his being seated in heaven as we participate in the fullness of our redemption, which will come either at our death and at the end of time. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, it was good to be with you on this uh, Sunday, and I pray that this is a wonderful Lord's Day that you have today. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.